Hi everybody, welcome to the class number four out of the track five about how we can apply artificial intelligence techniques to the context of the port container port operations. My name is Aníbal Azevedo and now we're gonna start this class using the knowledge of the previously class. If you didn't see the pre uh, previously class, let's appear some card somewhere. So uh, we are dealing now with the quake cranes, how we can incorporate quake cranes dynamics uh, inside your uh, or algorithms here, and uh, it's important how we can uh, produce some rules of operations that give us the total time necessary to perform unloading and loading operations in a container ship. So let's start uh, to see the code here. So the second rule here uh, seems to be very easy. Uh, but it's not this rule that we're gonna use it. Uh, the first rule was, let's see what was the first rule. Uh, the first rule was about to put the first quake crane exactly in the first bay and the second quake crane starts in the middle. So it's easy to understand where, where is the middle plus one position. Uh, it's okay. This was the uh, code that we made in the first for the first rule. Uh, remember that in the description of this video, you'll find uh, both rules, the code of both rules in Google Colab. And the second rule is a little bit different. Uh, the first position of the first crane is just the f uh, the first position of the bay, the first bay. Okay, not not this is not difficult. But uh, what is different now that to compute the position of the second uh, quake crane, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use the information inside the list with the total workload per bay. So this is the, basically this computation here that we made. Uh, this is very complicated computation, but it's, it, that is that simple, okay? We, uh, we got this uh, total workload per bay and see its position and compute where is the middle, where is the position that is in the center of the math, mass, okay, of the container ship in terms of workload. So we're going to use uh, this math cell operator here. So we need this uh, model, model uh, math. So, okay. So after doing this computation, we got uh, this the the position, okay. So we got here the position that we should use as the start position of the second crane, uh, quake crane. And what's important here? Everything else it's the same that we use it in the first rule. So if you saw the first rule, we have this. A large loop with a lot of else and else ifs to uh, just compute to just uh, calculate the total time that we're gonna need uh, for by using this initial position of quake cranes in a container ship. So we can adapt this. Well, let's use this information here. Let's use this configuration. Okay. So let's see. How much time we're gonna spend? One, one interesting thing that you can see here is that this configuration we're gonna spend the same time even if we have less total workload to perform in each bay. So in this uh, configuration we have three movements to perform here: four, five, six. This is the total uh, number of movements that we should made. Okay, uh, and the total time is going to be nine. Okay, so let's change this to this, which is the configuration that we have here. So this configuration, we have more work to do. See this, five, nine, ten number of movements that we have to perform. But the total time that we're going to spend here is nine. So one interesting thing is that uh, total number of movements is not is not just an interesting 
uh, guideline when we are talking about how much time we're gonna need to operate or to use unloading or loading operations in a container ship. And we proved this, we showed this effect in an article that we published in a journal. So uh, we leave this reference in the description of this video. Okay, then you can find this. Okay, so we already published in our journal, a respected journal, scientific journal, at uh, this effect. Okay, so it's not just oh, I, 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 it's a coincidence. It's not just a coincidence. Uh, the objective of minimizing total time and number of movements, it's not the same thing. Okay, so if you are just minimizing number of movements. You are not seeing uh, the the whole picture, the whole uh, film. You are just seeing a small part of the problem that can be very interesting, but is not enough to coordinate actions between equipments between the container ship and the cray crane. So this is the main message here. Uh, take care uh, about this. Do not uh, believe that I'm ah, minimizing the number of movements of the container ship. It's enough. Everything is going to be okay. No, take care about the quick cranes. And another interesting question that remains is uh, okay, so I have to move the quick cranes that I removed or I should put inside the container ship. Why not consider uh, the vehicles or the dynamic of the vehicles? Yes, it's important to consider, but we are not modeling this in the future. I hope to model this, okay? So uh, what we have to do now, we have these interesting uh, rules, Quay Crane Who rules, but how we can modify your original code that we developed in previously uh, tracks, how we can modify this simulator and how we can modify the genetic algorithm to consider these dynamics of Quay Crane, this Quay Crane's operation. So, we're gonna see in the next tracks how we can use this code in a way that we minimize the number of changes that we should do in the code. And that is the interesting thing, because if you should consider more equipment, how the code will be modified? This is an important question, because oh, it's very, very difficult to modify the code if you want to consider this and this and this equipment so this approach will be not uh inter will be not much interesting because imagine every time you should oh no there is another equipment oh no we have to modify the dynamics of this equipment so the code will be a nightmare to be modified this is not good but we in the next tracks we will show how to avoid this nightmare the code can be very simple if I, in a very simplified way can be modified without any problem any difficulties and it's it will be very interesting okay so thank you for your attention i hope you find this video interesting and useful and see you in the in the next tracks see you bye